presentations. Are you in pain or are you good? No. Therapy? Yeah, three times a week. Good for you. Let's put this right here. All right, you ready? Okay, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Welcome everyone to the February Parks and Rec Board meeting. Uh, I will start by reading the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met uh, we will move to the consideration of minutes uh, assuming you've read and are there are there any changes it's not entertain I have a motion to approve a second, second. any discussion all those in favor? Opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, any Metro Council referrals today? No, not today. All right, we're going to move to old business. 08-17-05, um, uh, Mr. Dan Dumermuth, representing the Northwest YMCA, requests a board approval for Metro Parks to acquire and take over operation of the Northwest YMCA during the year of 2018 and manage a facility as a regional center. I received a email uh, request from the board of the YMCA and director and they would like to defer this indefinitely so we're going to take it off the agenda and and uh, uh, we'll just see if it ever comes back up so um, that is not an issue for us now. Uh, moving on to 12-17-06 uh, Ms. Shane Dennison representing Conservation Assistance Grant Fund requests approval acquisition of 118 acres on the Cumberland River um, my understanding is this is deferred to the March Acquisition Committee. Correct. We don't need to vote on that, do we? No. I don't think so. If you already deferred it. Okay, it's already deferred. Um, that's the sa same exact thing for 12-17-07. Uh, it's same request for a different parcel. That's also deferred to the March Acquisition Committee. And then the last one uh, has to do with uh, it's 01-18-04. Uh, Dr. William Friss, uh, Vice President of the Dorothy Kate and Thomas Friss Foundation, requests approval for a donation of 51 acres um, on Morton Mill Road. That is also deferred to the March Acquisition Committee. So we'll, we will take those up the next meeting and come back, uh, bring it back to the board. So that takes care of old business. We'll move to the consent agenda. Um, I assume everyone has read the consent agenda and I would entertain a motion for approval of the entire consent agenda. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The consent agenda carries. We will move to new business. New business, 02-18-04, Bellevue Community Fund requests approval from the board to raise private funds for the redevelopment of the Red Caboose Playground and associated improvements. Tim. Um, so you'll see in my capital projects update that uh, we do have uh, some funding that has been allocated for replacement of the Red Caboose Playground and the Bellevue Community Fund it will also be uh, or would like to also raise private funds to um, supplement those metro funds. So that's the, that's the request. Any questions for Tim? The department uh, suggests that we approve this, entertain a motion. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 02-18-05, the second Harvest Food Bank request approval from the board to donate kitchen equipment, including refrigerator, refrigerators, freezers, ovens, and food warming equipment valued at $20,000 for use at various Metro Parks recreation centers. Sherry. Sherry. Oh, Sherry, I'm sorry. Uh, today with us, we do have several representatives from Second Harvest. I'd like to introduce Kim Molnar, the Chief Operating Officer, Whitney Coles, Director of Nutrition and Program Assurance, and Lee Blancado, Program Manager. Stevon and I and our staff have been working with Second Harvest for many years now. Uh, started years ago when we just started getting after school snacks for our youth programs after school, and it's amazing to see the difference when kids come in hungry and their behavior, their attention, their <coughs> enjoyability of the program, even able to do homework after they have a snack. So. With this additional grant possibility, it actually implements new appliances in many of our facilities, which totally impacts our budget line. So there, there's a lot of great opportunities here as we continue to work on providing snacks and nutrition programs to our youth. Thank you, each of you, for coming and this possibility. Any questions? Entertain a motion for approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you so much for that donation. Appreciate y'all being here. 02-18-06, uh, Mr. Dick Horton, who is here, uh, representing the Tennessee Golf Foundation request approval from the board to solicit private funding for improvements at Percy Warner Golf Course to include new greens, new irrigation system, and development of a practice short game area and I think we have some information um, yes, here uh, that was that given. and before before Dick starts I just wanted to say you each have a handout that uh, okay. Dick left for each of you about the proposal uh, this is something this is a project that was started some time ago uh, with Mr. Fike and Dick will describe all of it, it it's a it, it's very exciting for the golf uh, division because it results in improvements to the facility and the growth of the game of golf, which helps us at all of our courses. So uh, Dick will give the proposal, but I will say that the staff is in, in favor of this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to be here. Uh, the Tennessee Golf Foundation would like to build on a 18-year uh, relationship we have with Metro Parks. Uh, to come in and assist the uh, upgrading and capital improvements of Percy Warner Golf Course. Uh, you might wonder why we're interested in doing that and creating a practice area in there. And, and our mission as a foundation is to promote the game, grow the game with an emphasis on youth. Uh, we've done this in Shelby Park with a 33-acre golf course that uh, we privately raised $1.7 million. The late Jim Fike uh, was the original driver behind that. Uh, you had the land, we had the resources, uh, MDHA was involved, some of the prominent families in Nashville were involved, and it ultimately is a, is a $1.7 million asset that you own as a parks, and uh, it has been there for 18 years, and it's a wonderful success. Um, this idea came for, uh, from us from that original uh, time. What we propose to do is um, we need to go out and raise approximately $1.5 million to uh, renovate an aging facility. Uh, Percy Warner Park Golf Course is 80 years old. Uh, you've got an irrigation system that's 50 years old that's being hand watered by two individuals. A lot of downtime on that. You have uh, an outdated green system. You have summer greens and winter greens. Uh, we would come in, put a new irrigation system in, build 18 or build nine new greens, a practice area, um, and, and create a, a learning center and a practice area inside the property in the confines of the existing golf course. Um, we have not raised the money yet. We've got to start on it. And what we're asking today is for permission from Parks Board to, uh, to actively raise those funds. Uh, we're here to say that if we don't raise the funds, we can't do the project. We're also here to say that we have, you, know, you will have to verify that we do have the funding to do this uh, before we would undertake the project. Uh, we would be looking at mobilizing uh, January through February, or excuse me, January through March of 2019. Uh, it would take us the summer growing season of six months to uh, 
to fix the, to, to upgrade the property, and then we would want to open in the fall, uh, mid-September, uh, again, given good weather conditions, et cetera. Uh, we've had a uh, very highly skilled architect come in from Colorado. It was privately funded. He did four routings. Uh, we selected the least invasive routing that would alter one hole, the second hole, from a dog leg par four to a straightaway par four. Um, and then everything else, all the routing will stay the same. Um, it's a beautiful complement to a wonderful new clubhouse that you have for the entire park. Uh, we don't see any significant increase in play because of this, <laughs> because we'll be focusing on primarily youth, but anybody that wants to learn to play, whether it's seniors, juniors, whether it's women, um, whatever it happens to be. It's sort of for the west side of town, uh, Bellevue, Westmead. Um, it's just on the end of Bellmead uh, Boulevard, which you might say, well, what are you trying to do in Bellmead? Uh, I would have to say that uh, it's a beautiful park there. Not everybody is a member of Bellmead Country Club or Richland or Hillwood. Uh, this is really for the public people that play your golf courses. It's for us, as John had said, to, to create new golfers that can play public golf. And that public golf is primarily going to be played on the seven facilities that you already have, including in Percy Warner. Um, so I, I would open up to any questions that you might have uh, about this, and uh, we would uh, uh, seek your approval to go ahead and begin raising those funds. Any more comments, John? Or no, you covered it well. Mr. Chairman, I mean, what, what kind of dollars are we talking about? Uh, we've projected out that to cost $1.28 million with another $200,000 for range equipment, balls, clubs, et cetera. Um, and then we are going to create a player development fund uh, that you all will be a part of in doing that will develop the golfers right there on the property. So it's about a million and a half dollars uh, that will be raised. And we've got, I will say we have uh, an initial family that's the lead donor in this, uh, but it's pretty time sensitive. If, if we can't get this started and shoot for 2019, um, the only contingency for us is we know we have to raise the money. Uh, if we don't, there will be, it'll be no harm, no foul. But you have some people already Absolutely. interested. But we already yeah. have some commitments here, but we can't go any further asking for commitments. And again, I, I say this is time sensitive. You've got this short window of growing season to come in there. And if it gets delayed, I, I think our, our lead family may, um, may pass on the opportunity. So I'm unclear about the timing. Is it this summer that it would be closed? No, ma'am. No. It would begin in 2019. Okay. Uh, we'd mobilize January, February, March. Okay. Still be open. Okay. We'd close the golf course mid-March, and it would reopen mid-September. Okay. Mid-September. It's not okay. Any other questions? I think we should. Uh, Past this, um, I've talked to Dick a lot about this, and you know, when someone's ready to give and willing to give, and it's all about timing. Um, I think this would be a great thing for our course. It really needs an upgrade, and this would be a great way to do it. And it's been so successful in Shelby. This would be a, another great success, I think. So, and if, and John, I think you think it's a great idea for us We're to do this. Excited about it. Yeah. Yes. I just have one other question. Um, it sounds awesome. No, no. I'm just trying to understand the. Um, the player development fund operating stipend, 20%. Is that how we've been operating anyway? No, ma'am. Or can you explain a little more about yeah, that? Yeah. Um, what we intend to do with making an investment like this, we need to be ensured that, that we're going to do the programming and the player development uh -huh. in, inside Percy Warner Park. So we are asking that 20% that of the greens fees only, not the cart fees, not the food and beverage or anything, go into a player development fund that will be spent there and used at the Percy Warner Golf Course. So it's, it's really ensuring we have a partnership okay. that we don't just build, hand the city a, a nice upgraded golf course, and then all of a sudden begin closed out. We're, we're, we're not part of it. We're truly going to be partners in this. Okay. And this fund would, we envision it, and this was through Mr. Fike, he, he envisioned it as being a, a, a fund that sits outside but it would be managed by a representative of parks and a representative of us 
as to how we would spend the money. We, we would, we would, but we would keep it outside, not commingling it with city parks funds. That's fair enough. So, so the, your foundation would manage that fund? Well, we, we, we would manage it, but we would not spend without parks, without a park representative. There'd probably be two person board, three person board to do that. Okay. Um, but they also, as a caveat to that, the spending would all be, it would all be required to be spent back in either at Percy Warner or the other thing is if he took the players to Harford Hills or to McCabe or to Two Rivers, it. it would allow for their green fees and, and their expenses for that. So the, the money would come back, what was going out would I eventually see. come back in two parts. Okay. And, and I would That's say also point. too that we, we have a previous partnership with Metro. Uh, we have a partnership with Knox County with two golf courses there. We've got an RFP in Bristol. So this is sort of our, it is our mission to do this and it is, it, it is youth, so. Uh, um, Any forward. further questions? For the clarification, we, we passed this based on this information or is there, would there be a change or an addition to uh, um, the legal term is escaping me? I, um, Amendment. Amendment to, is there a, uh, Macy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you saying for like the bylaws they would have and how they would operate it? Is that what you're going? So this change would go by what's on this paper or is there an amendment to an agreement that we have with the Golf Foundation? Well, I'm not familiar with any agreement that we have with the Golf Foundation. Okay. So there may be To the one. friends group. You, you, there is a, there is a, an one. agreement, Monique. You're that's aware of it. That's Emma, with but the MOU with Vinny Lakes, Lakes and Shelby and Park. That's, that's yeah, there you go. MOU. That's a separate MOU. Yeah. MOU. I think the request, the, the request, if you approve, the request that you're approving is to allow for fundraising. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's okay. the request. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is just information. This is okay. not a binding agreement by yes. any. This just to give you a, an overview of how we'd like this to, uh, how we think it's going to look, but. Yeah, we, we have you to come raise. back with more detail on the absolutely. Yeah. Okay. This is not right, right, right. right. So I, I would. Any other questions? No. I move approval, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion for approval. Council has a question. Can I just inquire? Can you indicate for just the record what it is that you would like to So I don't I don't know if you're here when I read the, the motion. I, I arrived at 1201. I apologize, but I oh, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I mean, like, it was like it, well, the motion is um, Mr. Dick Horton representing Tennessee Golf Foundation requests approval from the board to solicit private funding for improvements at Percy Warner Golf Course to include greens, new irrigation system development and practice. So uh, this would be to solicit private funding for improvements. Right, understood, but by the same token, in so doing that, it, it appears that you as a board are giving your full approval to this, to this plan as written on a document that... I'll just personally speak, I th I, I'm for that. I mean, I think it's a good thing for the park, and if we need some you know, public meetings and but you feel like... not have any other questions about it? Or, I mean, it's just you based on the document that you've seen that you, you think that... 100% your board's going to give it a, a go ahead. I raised the question because of the pushback from community about use of park space. And I understand what they're asking about fundraising. I get that. My question is about the other, this paragraph at the bottom, what, we, what, the, what the organization gets in exchange. So 
approval, approval, approval for fundraising, but this feels like an MOU. This feels like MOU wording to me. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way. What I'm trying sure. to convey as a council member who, who represents the district is I think this sounds like a wonderful opportunity. I'm, I'm not opposed to it, but I would be hopeful that you as a board recognize that this is adjacent to a community. You also have a, a user group there at the park um, that, to my impression, is generally senior individuals. And so what will this change mean for that user group? Have, have you conducted a meeting with that user group. I, so um, it, it's not that those can't happen in the future, but I would hope as a community member and a council member that you as a board, when you are voting on something like this, that you would, frankly, ask more questions. And secondarily, if you're going to approve something, that you would additionally, you would stipulate that there might be, there needs to be a community meeting or, or something to that effect. Um, because effectively, if you as a board say, Let's, let's go ahead, you've effectively given your stamp of approval to the whole entire thing to happen. And that might be a wonderful thing, right? Well, I think I, it's, well, and, and your, your, your staff supports it. But I guess, as written here, if I were a community member who looked at this agenda, I, I would not understand what was happening in my park near to me. And I think it's very important that this board not get the cart before the horse while being fully supportive of the good work that has been done, and this is an excellent opportunity, um, but that it, you know, the onus is on you all to be showing for the public record that you, you are you know, thinking critically about this and asking questions and making sure that there's going to be appropriate community engagement. I mean, I can do that subsequent to this, but then I'm in a pretty awkward position to go to my community and then say, well, it's a done deal. Park sports already voted on it, but you know we're going to come here and check the box and have a community meeting. So we have a motion on the floor. Was there a second? I think uh, this motion is for them to go forward with it for raising the money. It's, it's the way I'm reading it. Is that correct? The well, the way it's worded, it, it does say, um, so, let's see, solicit. Private funding for improvements. So I think what Andrew's saying is there's a tacit approve it, approval there to do that. So maybe we just need to be a little clearer in that that we get permission to raise the funds. Um, can we have a community meeting in the next? Can you go raise funds and we can have a community meeting and come back at the next board meeting and maybe we can all be updated at that time? I don't think so. Okay. We we can't go out and raise funds and then come back and have you all say, well, we're going to reconsider this project for this reason or that reason. We can't do it. Um, you know, we're, in, we're in, a, in a business where if somebody commits to you, they expect you to uh, follow through on what you say. So uh, if we don't have tacit approval uh, or, or more to go forward, um, I, I'm making the assumption that this meeting today was that, yes, this is a good project for the city. Uh, we want to go forward, and then the next step is: can we raise? Can we raise the money? So, uh, Quick question for staff: As yes. we have renovated other golf courses, yes, sir. Have we gone out and had community meetings and no. gotten their feedback, or have we trusted the experts who understand golf courses, and then you all have reviewed those to say this is in the best interest of parks? What you just said right there: there's going to be no. The substantive change to the course. The course will be improved, but we did that at uh, both Harpeth Hills and at Two Rivers as well. I mean, if we were adding lights or changing the, the footprint of the course, it would be more of an effect, I think, outside of the course. With what they're doing right now, or what they're proposing to do, it basically takes a course that's out of date. The irrigation is out of date. The greens are out of date. Um, the one change is to create in an area that is currently not being used an area for teaching. That's the which I mean, I, so I, I guess the answer is there's, <coughs> there. We have not done to make improvements on our courses without substantially changing them. We would not normally do a public hearing. So why, why couldn't we approve it with the improvements, but also have a public meeting pre-MOU so we can dial it in where it makes sense for the neighborhood? So I think you can do both. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. 
Well, let me ask Angie, what, what are you hoping to accomplish with a public meeting? Well, I we've, guess... We've, we've trusted our staff mm -hmm. to say... Mr. Haynes, but this, this golf course is immediately adjacent to a residential neighborhood. Um, it is adjacent to uh, Cheekwood. There's a lot of um, uh, concerns in the neighborhood regarding traffic. So I think potentially that the neighborhood would take umbrage at the fact that another use or a change of use is being introduced. It may not have a significant impact at all. I'm, I'm not asserting that it does. I'm not saying that it's a negative. But again, kind of in a car course scenario, how would you feel if you lived immediately adjacent to this golf course or that you were a, a senior who goes and golfs here all the time and all of a sudden this golf course has been converted to um, a, a solely youth purpose. How? I don't that's think it's not a solely, not a solely, not a solely youth purpose. purpose. Well, that's, that's not something I know. Well, that's, that's what I, I think we need to do. Is, have you already been doing youth development at the Percy Warner Golf Course or is that a new thing with this? Well, we, I can speak to that. Yeah, Our Jonathan. staff has, yes. We have because we uh, had a, a, um, an award from somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Say, say I don't about. think it's a change of usage. I think can, it's just no. enhancing can I, what we can have. I, can you say more about that? I, I think we need to hear that. That is uh, Kevin Ford has, and actually, like you said, you recognized him just maybe the last time we were meeting. He has been using uh, Percy Warner as a location to develop his, and I always use the wrong term, it's the team golf as, uh, sport that's out there right now. And so he's been doing that at Percy Warner currently. So we do utilize Percy Warner as a, you know, it, it's very user user friendly. It's very easily walkable. In regards to the seniors, you know, anytime we make improvements and close the course, somebody's not gonna like that while it's closed, but the end result is everyone is gonna have a better product to use, including the seniors. So, uh, and we've had no kickback at all. And, and uh, Two Rivers has a very large senior uh, user group out there, and no one has kicked back on. I've uh, actually gotten a lot of good comments about this yeah. from neighbors across the street from the course that live in, uh, was it Belfast or whatever. The, so I, it's just enhancing what we have, and we have someone who's. So, <coughs> willing to raise funds and do it and um, I, I do think we should talk about the MOUs and we can we need to dial it in appropriately for the neighbors totally get that so I think that's part of that but I don't think we should lose this opportunity um, will the percentage of time that youth are on the course be significantly different or increased um, with that's a good good question. Really, what we want to do is put in an area for for youth, but for anybody that wants to learn to play, this is going to be a teaching area. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an area that you're going to come and rent range balls and pound them out all day long. It'll always be supervised instruction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there may be 12 to 16 in a class that's there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the use of the golf course, you're already playing 33,000 rounds of golf there, so we're not going to fill your golf course up. Uh, you've already got children that play there, you've got women and, and seniors that play there. Um, so I see, um, I see no impact whatsoever on traffic. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's a much bigger traffic issue on other parts inside that park. But quite frankly, I don't think that's that's our issue right now of what we want to do, and, and we can't we can't go forward with this project and then all of a sudden have a road carve up and come right straight through where we just invested a million and a half dollars on to you know and, and now all of a sudden there's going to be a four lane road going into Cheekwood through the golf course. So um, that's not what we're trying to to do, and and I think you know, Mr. Anderson, you you've hit it right on the head. It's is an opportunity, and and there is a window of time. Um, so, Angie, if we if we if we take the approach of let's approve it, but let's bring the MOU back after a public meeting, I think that's that's how we. Do. Right. I, I think the community would just like to hear from you all as a board. I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. And again, please, I'm I'm, I'm yeah. not trying to project any sort of negativity no, no, no. to the yeah. project, but I just ask for your board from an order of operations standpoint. If if you were to read this. You might not realize that 
there were, were changes coming to the golf course, and thus I just think it's, you know, the onus is on you all in um, approving this to also convey for the public record that it is important um, to inform the community um, about uh, the, the, the future possible changes. Again, which all seem to be positive, but there will be questions like, does this, I mean, again, the question I just had, is it, is it now youth only? No, can all yeah. ages still? But again, how does the community know that other than to have watched this meeting and heard you all asking those questions? If you all ask those questions, then this meeting can effectively almost serve as your public meeting, right? If, if your description here is more detailed, then community members who are concerned can come to this meeting or watch this meeting as you ask critical questions and learn about the project just by watching YouTube. Right? So prior to my raising eyebrows and actually kind of point of order, this was about to pass and y'all were y'all were done. So, you know, and that document that you're looking at and referring to for purposes of making that decision, it's not on your website. It's not a public record. Community members just want to know what's happening in their corner of their neighborhood. And people take offense when they feel that they have not been engaged or consulted or that the board, you know, might not, um, and I'm not saying this, but, but they might get the impression that you don't care what the adjacent community, but by just simply iterating, this sounds like a wonderful project, and additionally, we would encourage you, Mr. Horton, to coordinate with a council member to have a community meeting, then you convey that to the community. So we have Y'all being recorded um, gives you an opportunity. We have a motion on the floor. Someone second it? Second. We got a second. Any further discussion? Were we amending it to say what you said? If you want to do that, that would be good. Um, okay. But, um, <laughs> um, I, I think we should include that we would like to um, have community, have community, community open, yeah. open community yeah. discussion. And, and community. take that into consideration at the MOU. MOU, MOU. Yeah. Yes. Would that be sufficient for you to proceed? Because it's approved, but we just want to make sure the MOU, the yeah, um, times and the ages and all that, it just kind of outlines everything we talked about and we talked about. Right. Um, I, I think that'll be fine. Yeah. I, I've got people that I need to go back and, and see. This is pretty time sensitive for us. Um, and, and that uh, I'd like to be assured that it just focuses in on this property, uh, this issue, and not additional issues that are on the inside the park that we're going to be included in. No, 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 just this program. So just this, just this program, right. um, and and in our prior discussions with my prior discussions with Angie, uh, it was not focused just on on this program. It was focused on a bigger bigger vision of the thing, which I understand. That's certainly... I think it needs to be uh, only on this program, or we'll be here no, 10 years yeah. from now talking about this. No, understood. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, I had conveyed to Mr. Horton that one of the reasons I thought a community meeting was important is that neighbors have just had larger concerns about all the attenuating traffic, and so I did not want neighbors to see new things happening there and, and feel like, wait, they we're adding a new use. Again, it's just about transparency and full disclosure. Well, I think the message think is it's enhancing the current usage. Indeed, okay. right. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not suggesting that we should have a meeting to give people the context to be oppositional. I just, again, transparency and information, because we understand the larger context in that community, because of all the challenges there. I'm not saying that's. It's just context. So I think we have an informational meeting outlining what we talked about today, and if they have uh, questions and answer afterward, we can have that. How about that? Okay. So we have an addendum. Uh, take a, mo a motion to amend the motion. All right. Second. All those in favor of amending the motion? Opposed? All right. So now we have a motion with an addendum. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton, for that. Um, all right, moving on to 02-1807, staff request board approval to acquire approximately 0.66 acre map number 148-160-0, um, located at 
2342 Antioch Pike for future park connection and expansion of the Mill Creek Greenway. This will be deferred also to the Acquisition Committee. I have one question. Yes. Um, parcel number should be 075, address 2343. 2343? Please. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. We have a few special presentations today. Um, the first one listed uh, was Ms. Terry Short um, supporting the Save the Northwest Wild. That uh, she is not here uh, since that is now indefinitely deferred. Um, we will move um, to. Is Brian Taylor here? I've not yeah. seen him. Oh, there he is. Your hand behind. There, Brian. Um, Brian Taylor is the president of the National Parks Foundation, and he is here to give us his annual report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As the Chair said, I am Brian Taylor. I'm the Chair of the Parks Foundation Board. I um, want to thank you for letting me be here. Uh, first, I would like to personally thank Ms. Janet Frazier. She is, um, when the foundation was created back in 2015, what that did was, um, was allow Janet one more meeting at least three or four times a year to have to sit through and take meetings for. She does it so very well. Though, so she's <laughs> right. Uh, she does it so well, and she's been a, an enormous help for me and the rest of the board members. So, Janet, thank you so very much for what you do for us. Um, just take a few moments of your time to give you a quick rundown on, on where we are as an organization. Again, as I said, we were founded in the spring of 2015 uh, as um, a measure as part of the agreement between Live Nation, uh, Ascend Amphitheater, and, and, and Metro Parks. Um, Twelve thirty-one. Our cash balance was three hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred fifty-four dollars, of which seventy-eight thousand four sixty-three are considered restricted funds. Uh, we operate two different accounts. One is a, a primary checking account, and is an, another is an Earth Day account. Um, that is a separate event altogether. Um, 2017, uh, just to give you a rundown, we, we, we took in, in the form of income, $222,000 uh, over the course of the year, of which $70,000 were restricted funds. And when I say restricted, I mean funds that are given to the foundation um, and are restricted for specific and certain causes. Um, for example, uh, Cane Ridge Disc Golf, we took in $5,400. That is a specific event. Um, we also took in, we, we received $99,000 in change from Live Nation as a part of the partnership with Ascend Amphitheater. We received 62,000 restricted funds from the Metro Historical Commission. Um, those funds are restricted for the purpose of a book on the history of Warner Parks. Um, we received 50,000 from the Predators Foundation we received 43, I'm sorry, $4,350 uh, as a part of the Earth Day proceeds that, if any of you may or may not remember, was actually rained out. Um, and I'll talk about that more in just a few moments. Um, there, were, there were about two or three other various contributions we received um, that are restricted in nature, but those two or three other projects were less than $1,000. Not that we love accepting funds from a restricted basis, but we have the opportunity to do that um, for specific and sundry projects that folks around the community want to do, and the Parks Foundation is a great opportunity for them to contribute until they get that project ready to either, either happen or in conjunction with the Parks Department to uh, fulfill that need. Uh, our expenditures in 2017, um, we approved roughly $78,500 in expenditures. Those were, we, although we took in money for the Cane Ridge Disc Golf, we also spent those funds for Cane Ridge Disc Golf. Um, the Coleman Park Sunshade, we received those funds two years ago, uh, and this is a project that I think um, the, the community needs to, uh, particularly the elected officials, I don't know that I see any here, Mr. Cooper, <laughs> um, this was a project, a developer was building a neighborhood, and part of that project was green space. And this Coleman Park Sunshade was a $30,000 grant 
from the developer to the foundation that in, in, in essence went back to that development in the form of green space and this, and this facility. So two things, it got green, it, it, it created green space for the development and it created a, an opportunity for the developer to, in essence, get a tax deduction for donating or, con or contributing the funds to the foundation. We'll call that public-private partnership. Um, we approved $4,000 for the Parks Employee Christmas um, dinner, which we as a foundation, you know, none of us would be here without the Parks Department employees, <laughs> and we can't say enough for what they do for not only this department as well as our city. Um, we, had, we also contributed six, just under $7,000 for a summer camp bus expense, uh, which allowed, I don't know the exact number, but it was a considerable number of children to actually get to go to Centennial Park and play for the day. So we covered the expense to bus those kids to the park. We had three um, significant grant requests for the year. The first was, a hey, bless you, the first was, uh, $10,400 to the Metro Parks Cultural Arts Dance and Music Division. We contributed 6,200, or we granted $6,250 to, to the Nashville Steam Preservation, which as you may know is the, the renovation and relocation project for the locomotive number 576 in Centennial Park, which those of us on the board uh, on, on the foundation board, and I'm sure you do as well, and those, a lot of those in the community think that is a very, for lack of better adjectives, that's a very cool project to bring back to life something that's sat in our park system for a long, long time. Ryan, uh, we contrib Ryan, will you say again how much you gave to that project? Uh, $6,250. Okay. The one I think got will get the most bang for the buck is we contributed $15,000 to the Hillsborough West End Save the Dragon campaign. Um, that has been around for a long, long time. And the unique part about this contribution and the way we approved it is through a grant matching. In other words, we said we will give you $15,000 when you raise $15,000. I think in the end they ended up getting through Miss Odom's efforts uh, with Metro, with our $15,000 that matched, and they raised an additional $15,000. I, I believe they got enough funding to complete that project. If not, they're pretty darn close. Um, but to me, that was a unique program because we want those experiences to be kept, maintained uh, in our park system because we want our kids to have safe, uh, places to play in our parks. Um, moving forward, our 2018 expectations. Um, just so you know, we, we have already received the Live Nation grant this year. It, it came in in January of $91,300. Um, regarding Earth Day, we as, a, we as a board, again, that, that program has been going on for a while. Um, we're, going to we're going to have further conversations about Earth Day. This last year it was rained out. In the event that, in, in the unfortunate event that that event loses some of its primary sponsorships, it could potentially lose money. Now, what we don't want to do as an organization is be on the hook for any lost revenue or lost funds should it be rained out again or canceled for any, any reason. So we're going to continue to discuss that and hopefully create methods and ways um, that we're, we're protected from a, from a just a total loss standpoint. Um, we're not so sure that we will continue to get the Preds Foundation monies. Um, what was that for? Was it just general operating or? Which one? The grant from the Predators. Uh, the Preds Foundation, you know, that started uh, a few years back, as many of you remember, when they created the ice rink. Um, the revenue that that generated helped contribute the number of funds or the amount of funds that we ultimately received. I'm not sure what they raised through 
efforts through that ice rink, which was a part of the NHL All-Star experience. A similar arrangement to Live Nation, a portion of revenue comes to the Pirates? Um, no. I don't know that it was that kind of relationship at all. The Live Nation is a contractual relationship we have. Yeah. The Preds Foundation is just an in-kind. But it was for use at the ice rink? No, no. Those, those are funds. Are, those are unrestricted okay. funds given to the okay. foundation, uh, they, which we're very appreciative of. I'm sorry. They were using Walk of Fame Park. Yeah, for the, the temporary. The, using creating the rink at Walk of Fame right. Park, they made a contribution to the foundation. I mean, we certainly hope to continue a relationship with those uh, folks, and we will accept anything they're willing to give us. But uh, we cannot and will not count on those funds going okay. forward. Um, going forward. The one thing we're going to continue to do as an organization is continue to work with parks on those low-hanging fruit projects. Um, ideally, uh, in, the, in the long run, we want to have someone in place in the form of a director. Um, we're, we're starting those conversations, but fortunately, we don't have to. We haven't had to have that person in place. We don't need that person in place today because, unlike most nonprofits, we've got a contractual funding source through the Live Nation Ascend um, agreement, and we have the uh, fortunate ability to to slow walk a lot of things. Uh, the three projects we gave money to this year came to us. We're excited about giving those funds away. We will continue to do so in the coming years, um, but. Um, we don't have to make any necessary changes um, overwhelmingly today, and we're happy with that. Any questions? But we're excited about where we are. <coughs> Thank right. you. Any Thank questions, you, Mr. Chair? So we, we we started this foundation what three years ago? Um, spring of fifteen. And um, I think this board, when we started it, you know, kind of set the direction in terms of taking it slow, you know, uh, and I think I'll have, and it's been a good thing, and. I think it'll continue to grow and there'll be a lot more opportunity in it. So we we'll appreciate your service. And All right. Thanks for the report. Thank you. Um, and I did want to mention um, that, um, and Brian, you told me that y'all approved Terry Hughes as the new park board member that was appointed by the park board. I wanted to mention that yes. also. So, um, so I guess the next. That's why I had so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. You'll have more. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, moving on to our next presentation today to the two Friends of Two Rivers Mansion, Phil Claiborne. Thank you, uh, Director Odom and Chairman Anderson, members of the board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to bring you an update from the Friends of Two Rivers Mansion. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to introduce uh, Larry Weber. He is the uh, 2018 president of the board. And he's here to make sure that I don't make any mistakes, okay? Uh, I, you have a handout there uh, that I provided for you, and the uh, first page of it uh, after the uh, cover is the calendar of events that uh, was approved uh, earlier on the um, consent agenda. Uh, the next page, uh, 2017 accomplishments and expenditures. Uh, won't spend a lot of time unless you have uh, specific questions. But uh, on the, uh, as far as the exterior of the mansion, uh, we have a new sign in place now along McGavick Pike uh, that is uh, accompanied by a three panel farm fence all across the front of the property, which uh, sets the context for the mansion in a completely different frame. Uh, it, it is very impressive. If you haven't been along there, uh, I would invite you to make a drive by and, uh, and see that. Um, We've repaired and uh, repainted a portion of the east facade facial that had some water damage that had occurred, reglazed five of the south facing windows. We've completed an archeological survey of the proposed event center behind the mansion. And uh, we have an, uh, two trails now in the backwoods, one to the spring house uh, ruins. And, and just recently, thanks to uh, parks grounds, uh, we've blazed another trail to uh, the dairy barn site. Uh, which is close to the golf course. And then we've done a complete uh, restoration and staging of the 1802 house. And the total cost for that is $74,569. Uh, interior, uh, we've uh, done some um, not so visible things. We've joined the Na uh, American Association of State and Local History, purchased a new computer with uh, past perfect software for collection management. Um, we um, contracted for the uh, 
a uh, cataloging and a digitizing of that uh, uh, entire inventory. And along with that is uh, a tutorial to a couple of folks so that we can keep that past perfect thing uh, working. It also has a membership component to it. Uh, we contracted for the development of two educational programs for uh, uh, area elementary schools. One is the Mansion History and the Prehistoric Mississippian Culture that was present on that uh, land. And then Two Rivers Mansion, Plantation Life and Slave Culture. Uh, we had a donation of a painting uh, that uh, is of a dog, we think, that belonged at one time to the Mayavics, uh, and so it had to be restored and uh, repaired, and then we have a display cabinet that we rehab. So a total of $9,000 for that. And then uh, <clears throat> the uh, bottom category, uh, we have continued to fund 19 hours of Ms. Carrillo's salary. Uh, who is the parks employee and the liaison to the mansion. Uh, docent pay for our uh, summer tours and two uh, December weekends. And then uh, after hours, uh, green sheet expenses for uh, parks employees. So mm -hmm. all told last year we spent, uh, we paid, uh, granted two parks, $40,742 for uh, parks uh, uh, salaries, a total of 124321 that we spent last year as our part of partnering with you on behalf of Two Rivers Mansion. Uh, and uh, I'll, down at the bottom, uh, this uh, past year we didn't do any music events at the mansion and so that reduced, we're kind of rethinking how music at the mansion uh, is going to take place going forward. So in 2016, we had our highest number uh, of events at the mansion was 96 days in which the mansion was active, and we had a total of 12,661 visitors in 2016. And, and even with the reduced activity, uh, eliminating music last year, we still had a total of 67 event days at the mansion and 10,565 visitors on property to, uh, to the mansion. Uh, any questions about that before we go to the next page? Well, I would just like to say that's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. We, we take, we, we're appreciative of your compliments and uh, we, uh, we strive to do better. <laughs> uh, the budget uh, for 2018 is presented to you there on the next page. Um, and uh, then the last two pages, I would just reference uh, what we have done in terms of the master plan. We completed the master plan uh, a little over a year ago, and so I've highlighted in yellow the things that have been accomplished uh, that we have done as far as the Friends Group uh, is concerned. Uh, and the first one actually is in cooperation with the, uh, the Parks Department and uh, Tim. And uh, folks, we're uh, moving forward on the uh, design stage for the event center. Now that the archaeology, and we will have the archaeology report hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, it's been delayed because of flu uh, in the firm. Uh, we have uh, did some uh, exterior mansion restoration. Uh, the front fence, the gate, the sign that I mentioned, the uh, Harding House, uh, uh, 1802 house restoration in a frontier early American plantation home style. Uh, we've replaced uh, cabinets in there uh, and created a conditioned space in the mansion for uh, collection. So those are physical site improvements. Uh, moving on to the next page, interpretation. Uh, we've, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the bullet points that are highlighted where the, the entire phrase is not highlighted, those are things that we hope to achieve this coming year. And that would be development and installation of interpretive panels uh, in the house as, as well as along the greenway, uh, some interpretive uh, media in the mansion, uh, and interpretive signage on the grounds. We have updated the site tour and the house tour. And as far as administration is concerned, uh, we have developed it, the educational programs and the teacher recruitment materials. Uh, the deaccession of unwanted and unneeded collection, and again, thanks to Parks for helping us uh, with that. Uh, accession numbering of the retained collection and the introduction of uh, a software uh, collection uh, system. So those are things that uh, we have uh, accomplished uh, in the past year, and uh, we're very proud of that. And 
Uh, we're glad that uh, we're uh, uh, hosting the uh, symphony again uh, with parks, uh, music in the parks in June. That'll be a big attendance thing. And uh, our next event at the mansion is coming up here very soon. That's uh, the Two Hearts Antique Show. That's uh, February 16, 17, and 18. I'll give this to Janet, and if you can find a uh, place to put it in the uh, park's office, so that all the employees can see that. So uh, with that, uh, uh, unless you have uh, questions, then uh, I thank you for your time. And George, I've tried to be brief. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job, and y'all are doing a great job. And I remember when it first started, and it's been amazing. And I'm glad you said what you said earlier, but. It's, how long ago was it now? Was it uh, we're in our seventh year. Yeah. So, so may I ask one question? Yeah. I'm, it isn't, I'm new. I'm still kind of new here. So um, we all have to be new sometime. <laughs> are you, are, is your friends group doing all of this programming and also manage, managing the events and is the event revenue, the rentals are, are part of the revenue that, is that how you, or is it all contributed? No, well, no. It's uh, we're we're uh, we're set up basically on the same template that the conservancy is. Uh, we uh, uh, all of the events at the mansion are funneled through the friends group, and uh, so we work in cooperation with the parks department. But uh, that's the reason you see some gold sheet expenses on on there that uh, we do pay for some after hours uh, personnel. And then the revenue from the rentals is Re you goes through the friends group. Goes through the friends group, friends group right. And so our, uh, one of our primary uh, income sources, obviously, is weddings. Okay. Uh, we did uh, 22 weddings, I think, last year. Uh, but uh, And then our uh, tours, uh, summer tours, and uh, some of our other uh, fee-based events. Uh, we do have, uh, we are fortunate to have a benefactor. Uh, the fence and the sign, uh, those numbers, uh, those were gifts Wonderful. from a benefactor, and uh, he gets in touch with us uh, at least once a year and says, uh, I need to spend some money before tax time. So uh, <laughs> it's always good to have somebody like that in your corner. It so sure is. <laughs> Thank Great you. Great job. Thank you so much. All right. Um, our last presentation today, uh, Mr. Isaac Thompson with Lab Nation. Uh, is here to update the board on the Sen Theater. Isaac, welcome. Thank you, Professor. Okay, if I do it. Of course. Perfect. Give me a second to get it set up. having us. I always look forward to a chance to spend time with you guys uh, and keep it brief and not go high level, but I always enjoy getting a chance to kind of update on what we're doing at your state-of-the-art award-winning amphitheater downtown. So um, I wanted to just highlight, it's tiny to see, but we'll get this circulated to you guys as well. That's a list of all the shows we did this season. You had some really legendary top-of-the-line acts that uh, graced our stage from uh, Dave Matthews, Alan Jackson, Van Morrison, the list goes on and on. Uh, all in all, we had 45 events out at Ascend this past season, 2017. Believe it or not, in about two and a half seasons, we've done over 120 events at Ascend, which is a, a really cool feat to look back on. Uh, in addition to the shows, we as a company, Live Nation, promote and uh, produce out there. We partner with the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. They did three concerts last year. We also work with the city, mayor's office, and park district on civic events. Those range from, as you can see, uh, we had a couple nights of concerts tied to the Music City Marathon and Sports Council, CMA every year. Fourth of July has done their fireworks and symphony on the stage on Fourth of July. Americana Fest is, I think, going on their third year this year of utilizing the uh, amphitheater as well as uh, we do a, a benefit with Big 98, the guitar barbecue, to benefit St. Jude. Um, so again, 45 events out there last year. Um, one of the things that I enjoy every year is uh, some of the community events we do, things outside of those concerts. Um, you'll see, uh, some of you may have been there or uh, saw the, the Stanley Cup viewing parties. Those were last minute exciting things we got to be a part of, uh, open up the amphitheater 
for families, anyone to come down for free, watch the, uh, watch the Stanley Cups. Um, we'll be ready for it a little more this year when they go there. Uh, it kind of sprung on us last year, but it was an awesome chance. Uh, we were able to mobilize and activate a vigil for the Las Vegas shooting victims last year. Kind of in a day's notice, we've done some uh, summits. We do some private events. We actually uh, had our first wedding at the amphitheater, which was interesting, but very cool out there as well. We do a lot of private events. And again, for me, this is the stuff that uh, is fun for me. We kind of get in a routine with the concerts. I love kind of having a, a little something different. And it's fun for our staff, fun for me to get a chance to work with, with these folks and a chance to kind of give back to the community and work with the uh, city on, on some things and uh, with the, the beautiful space that's already there. Um, speaking of some of our partnerships, <coughs> you'll notice we do a really good job of trying to work with a lot of local partners. Most of our partnerships on the sponsorship side um, are with local Middle Tennessee uh, organizations and companies. We pride ourselves on that. That was something when we came into the marketplace in 2015 was a was an <coughs> objective of ours to really be selective with who we're partnering with. We'll have a couple national partnerships, but for the most part, uh, what we're doing out there is, is tied to local partnerships in the community. Um, feedback's always another big one. I, one of the reasons I love what I get to do is to create an environment where we're constantly creating uh, once in a lifetime opportunities. That's, that's kind of our motto out there as a staff internally is, is you know, we're in Music City, we're, we've got to live up to that uh, expectation. When people come to Ascend Amphitheater, they need to have an incredible experience. And again, year over year, it's actually amazing to see some of the results we get. We, we uh, through our ticketing um, company, Ticketmaster, we have the ability to use their data and send post-show surveys after every show through to their database. Um, and, and again, we get 95% uh, of our guests that participate in those rate the overall experience as excellent or good. Just as comparison, our, across our 60-some concert amphitheaters outside that Live Nation does in the country, that average is about 84%. So we continue to exceed that year over year. Some of the categories in those were continually the year over year the top in those categories, cleanliness, security ushers, ticket takers, overall experience. Um, again, I think it's our third straight year of being the top ranked outdoor amphitheater uh, in the Live Nation system in all those categories, which again is a testament just to the, the people and the culture we're trying to do out there. And at the end of the day, that's a reflection on the city, that's a reflection on you guys, that's a reflection on us out at the amphitheater. Uh, we have, I could put up pages of great reviews of, of people who come out there and have just an incredible time and have having an awesome experience. A lot of uh, what I do in my job, unfortunately, focuses on those negatives and on how we fix those things. It's easy to forget about the overwhelming positive feedback that we continuously do get out there. Um, economic impact, again, you can see some of those numbers. I'll walk you through them. For revenue that is generated directly to Metro uh, through our seat fees and contractual yearly rent base payments, uh, in 2017, we generated $702,000 that went directly to uh, Metro Nashville. Um, as Brian mentioned earlier, the National Parks Foundation and Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee each split $182,000 that was generated from a dollar of um, a dollar each paid ticket that we generate at every paid concert. One of one dollar goes 50 cents to the Parks Foundation and 50 cents to the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. Um, as you look down through at the city and state tax revenue, you can see some of those numbers on uh, taxes generated and tax revenue generated through our ticket sales as well as our concessions, food and beverage and liquor taxes um, out of the amphitheater. One thing that I enjoy and love seeing growing is since we opened in July of 2015, we've raised about $524,000 uh, equally between Nashville Parks Foundation and Community Foundation of Tennessee. Again, that split half and half to those foundations. Uh, DBE participation, another one of our big uh, things we gear on. We love our partnerships with our DBE 
certify organizations. Over the years, we've had uh, utilized access security, flavor catering, Ewing Transportation, Clarksville Fencing, as well as Trojan Labor, uh, all of whom are uh, DBE certified organizations. So again, I, I love kind of talking about this because that's, you know, no pun intended, that's the money slide. That's the slide that uh, we're able to give back and, and show some uh, revenue generated directly to parks as well as the city of Nashville. Um, as we look forward to next year, we've already got starting to kind of line up a pretty good lineup. I think we're going to have a record year ticket sales this year. We've got a lot of stuff already on sale. You'll see another 10 to 15 over the next month or two that get announced and go on sale out of the sin. So again, I think we'll be uh, pretty much hitting our cap of, of concerts really early here in Q1, Q2 and uh, ready to kind of market those. And again, we, we foresee it being a record year on ticket sales out there. And again, just wanted to leave you with kind of again our motto, our vision statement out there, fans creating once in a lifetime experiences for fans. And again, we couldn't do that without our partnership with you guys, your support and your efforts to partner with us. So again, thank you for the time and uh, looking forward to another great year. And uh, always enjoy working with you guys and the staff at Metro Parks. It's an incredible relationship. We truly enjoy that relationship and it, and it really works well and smooth. So thank you guys. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, any questions for Isaac? I have one. Yes. So Isaac, I guess I can't imagine what being a Metro Council member would be like, but as a Parks Board member, I get questions from people yes. to ask. And um, had a number of people that reached out to me regarding the Greenway, yep. um, wanting, hopefully, to have it open during concerts, and at the very least, um, minimizing the time when it's fenced off. Sure. Um, so let me speak, speak to, to that, that a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and Jim can probably jump in there as well. So currently, the system we have in place the only time any portion of a greenway is temporary shutdown is from 3 p.m. until 11 p.m. from sound check basically to the end of the show. And the portion of that that is shut down is directly south or behind the fan area of the uh, amphitheater. So you still have greenways accessible around. So you could get uh, down from Broadway, down and around, utilizing the sidewalk, kind of that goes around so it's never fully shut down and again I'll let uh, right. Jim speak to that well, there, further there were a, a number of Mondays last summer mm -hmm. when it was fenced off the in the which areas are you referring to the south the, by the river gotcha on show days or not show days not not show days after a show gotcha it, they seem to close a <coughs> um, long time I, I can yeah. address this. We've been working with Live Nation since the beginning. It's never closed. That there's a detour on those days. Right. So what, what, the only part of it that gets closed is inside the amphitheater itself. So at worst, what happens is people have to just go around the building on the outside and go around to First Avenue. So there's there's always a route, and we've got a map that we send to people. We get questions about it fairly frequently. I can send them the map. And then what happens is the part that he was talking about under KVB, under KVB, there's a little tunnel that goes over to Rolling Mill Hill, and that only closes at 3 o'clock on show day and opens oh, back up. That's on, the one that closes. And that, that sh but the part within the amphitheater will oh. close on a load in day before a show because they're loading in, it has to be secure, and then it'll be closed on the day of the show, and then it opens back up pretty quick the day after. As soon as they can, they get it open Correct. back and up the day after. It may be an show. operational thing. Oh, we're happy to look into again. It, it would be if, great if, if, if I there's could a report back. That and I, I can send you the map, and I can yeah. send, you know, we, you we've been talking about like that. I can email out to send Absolutely. To happy folks. to send it to you. And again, we'll work with it's just it's usually minimizing pu that. Public I think works it's, or I someone's think fencing, right? So it, it, again, it very well could be a thing where someone's not taking that, no one's staffing it or stopping it, but there's a fence in place maybe the morning after a show. Again, I think that's an easy operational the fence fix of that actually someone. Goes into the area that goes through the amphitheater is, Correct. What, so, is yes. what's closed the and that's following up, day. Again, for it. And or two days, I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, again, I think that's a very simple operational fix. Just being with. Ten tending to the least amount of time would be yep. awesome. 100%. Any other questions? Thank you, Isaac. Appreciate the relationship and partnership. All right.
That's the end of our presentations. Um, Tim, uh, any capital projects updates? I'll just hit the highlights. Uh, you all approved the Bellevue uh, Foundation to raise funds for Red Caboose. Uh, design is underway on that. We had the first public meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. Great turnout for that. And uh, thanks to Rick and his crew, they're going to begin demolition of the existing playground this month. Um, at Fort Negley, the cultural landscape plan is out to bid currently. Those bids are due on the 9th, and this is uh, a grant that the Metro Historical Commission uh, got and, and then we matched. So it's looking at um, the landscaping on the top of the hill. Um, it's looking at uh, stonework stabilization, and it's looking at some uh, uh, potentially some supplemental archaeological investigation elsewhere on the site. Um, at Hadley, uh, the structure is up for the bubble and the fabric is in the process of being installed right now. Um, and at Old Hickory on the community center, uh, we're in the preliminary planning schematic design phase on that and there will be a public meeting in a couple of weeks that uh, Jackie's probably going to tell you about. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, All right, moving on to Jackie, upcoming special events and activities. So the events that you have in front of you, although it's a short list, we've got a lot going on. Starting tonight, uh, the Conservancy for Centennial Park has songs for Centennial Park. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the second phase of uh, the uh, renovations to Centennial Park. Doors open at 6. Uh, the program actually starts at 8, and the event is at the city winery. And I do have a list of people that will be performing there, I thought, uh, but I don't have it immediately in front of me. But anyway, I can guarantee you it'll be a great event, and people are really looking forward to it. Again, it's at the city winery. The performances are at 8, and the doors open at 6. Uh, on the 10th, we have a Black History Month celebration at the Centennial Black Box Theater. Uh, that's going to be primarily music. Uh, the musical guests are Lauren McClinton and Rizo McCullough uh, with the band Concurrence. Uh, there will be a guest speaker. His name is Jimmy Odie, and he will be talking about uh, the history of music on Jefferson Street here in Nashville. Uh, Tim referred to the uh, public input meeting for Old Hickory Community Center that's scheduled for 6 p.m. on the 13th. Uh, Mr. Claiborne referred to the Two Hearts Antique Show, which starts uh, on the 16th at Two Rivers Mansion. It runs for three days. It's always a very well-attended event. Uh, then we have another Black History Month celebration on the 22nd of this month. Uh, that's at Madison Community Center. That's music, dance, and they will have a speaker as, as well. On the 23rd of this month, we'll have the opening artist reception for the printmaking exhibit at the Centennial Art Center. Uh, that reception starts at 530. That's it. Thank you for the updates. Um, uh, any department head updates for today? All right, before we get to the report of the director, um, that's two things. I would I would like to go ahead and schedule that walk uh, that we talked about um, at Fort Negley and the Greer uh, property. I think it would be good for the board to have that maybe on Saturday. Um, and along those same lines, as we all know, since the last meeting, that project uh, is not uh, going to proceed. And so as a park board, we will certainly work closely with uh, you know, guiding the what happens next year, along with Fort Negley, Kix Brooks is involved, and we're going to get everyone to the table and work collaboratively uh, for that. So that will be uh, coming up. Um, so having said that, I'll go to the report of the director. All right, thank you. Um, two, uh, two items that I'd just like to mention. Uh, the council will vote on a resolution this evening, um, and it partic in particular has to do with um, supplemental funding for General Hospital, but uh, there is a piece of that proposal that will could potentially impact Metro uh, departments and employees, and a, a hiring freeze would be instituted. 
Um, the finance department has said that they would work with departments on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I um, know that we have many vacancies and we are very lean in terms of staffing. So um, I have been proactive in talking with the finance department about um, making sure that we have the staff that we need available. So um, we'll see what comes this evening and uh, I will keep you updated and abreast of how things move forward. Um, there's going to be some work done in this on this building in particular um, on the roof. I think it starts in the middle of this month or sometime yeah. this month um, on the roof. So there will be the need to um, move the March Parks Board meeting um, to another location. Uh, Madison Community Center, which will not yet be open to the public, has been proposed. So we're looking for another um, another location to meet and we'll let you know about that as soon as we have settled on a location. And that's it. All right, any questions or announcements? Request <coughs> for further agenda items or future agenda items? If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. <coughs>